Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. My name is Shinobi and I'm a virtual photographer. Virtual photography is the art of doing photography in virtual worlds, namely video games. And if we as virtual shooters are freed from a lot of technical constraints, we still use the same visual rules and aesthetic than traditional photography. We do portraits, landscape, action shots, and we love, like everyone else, black and white. But it's a hard style that is often misunderstood. In today's video, I'm gonna explain what I think is a good use of black and white. Let's go. All right, let's start by stating clearly what we are talking about in this video. We are talking about black and white. We are not talking about monochrome. Monochrome shots are not always black and white, but black and white shots are always monochrome. You can have a sepia shot or a red gradient only shot. They are monochrome, it means just one color. Even though they can follow the same rules as black and white, they also convey a supplementary information through the color, like the idea of violence or warmth or nostalgia, something like that. Pure black and white shots don't have this. That's why we will talk about them today. As usual, we'll ask ourselves the two major questions. Why and how do we do black and white photography? I also want to say that I'm not great at it myself. I do them rarely, but I am very interested in them and studied quite a bit of it for movies or photography. I also think that a lot of VPRs use it kind of wrong or not as well as they could, but I am not saying that you watching this now is doing it wrong, obviously, or that you shouldn't do it at all. I'm just here to put into words and images what I think is the optimal way of using black and white and why this style is still very much relevant in our color, color, colorful era. I expect you to share in comments your own experience of this and if you have tips to share with the community, it will be very much appreciated. <clears throat> so why do we use black and white? At the beginning of photography and film, we had no choice but doing black and white. But when color film started to show up in the early 19th century, it slowly became a second choice and now a very much displayed choice. And this is probably one of the first very important elements we need to understand shooting black and white is a strong choice. But as any choice we make in photography, we need a reason for it. We've talked about that on the channel before, but I see a lot of shots that were probably meant to be color shots and then just turn into black and white without actual reason or maybe wrong reasons. I think you should definitely choose to take a black and white shot from the start instead of just having it vaguely imposed to you as a second choice in post-edit. Most of the time, people will think that black and white will add emotion or a deeper tone or seriousness, I, I don't know, but that's not always working for me though. So what are good reasons to shoot in black and white, huh? Taking away the color information in a picture implies that you will have to get your other information stronger. Let's recap the basics, right? In photography, we mainly deal uh, with composition. This is the way you organize your elements, how they talk to each other, what dynamic they'll create for the viewer's eye, etc. So we do this with leading lines, depth of field, use of light and color theory, obviously, such as color oppositions or complementarity. So if you take out the color information, you will need to make the others much stronger and meaningful. For me, it's very often about lines and contrasts, for instance, but this is not the only reason to use black and white. You can take the color out to flatten your image and create a new story or visual play. Look at this great traditional shot by Nick Brown. Shooting this in color would give away the fact that elephants are a wall painting. Here, black and white creates the illusion, even for a second, that they are in the middle of the city. Black and white is a great way to put everything on the same flat surface and put all the attention on textures, for instance. Without any color, your eye will have to focus on contrast to read the picture. And I think it's now very important to talk about what contrast is in black and white photography. 
In the tattoo world, did you know that we don't speak about black and white tattoo, but black and grey tattoo? That's because only black ink is used, and greys are done with more or less water added into the ink. The white parts are actually the naked skin. At 500 followers, one tattoo reveal. But in photo, we do have the full gradient panel going from total black to total white, through all the possible greys. Now, usually what you want in a photograph is a lot of this and a lot of that. If everything in your shot is about this, there are counterexamples, of course, but usually it won't be super clear or powerful. So be careful not getting an all gray washed picture. But you still want some grays, of course, unless you go for a pure two-tone shot. But it will be much easier to play with shapes, light and leading lines with strong blacks and strong white. The key here is to have a bit of every tones in a quantity that suits what you're trying to show. A really cool trick I learned when I was in art school in my drawing class, which is basically black and white, and that I still use to this day is to shut my eyes in order to see the shot better. Shut your eyes? Wait. No, no, no. Not completely, of course. But you squint your eyes to put your eyelashes like a veil that will blur your vision and lower your accuracy. And you'll see less details and more values or tones. You might look stupid but you'll see the overall dynamic of the picture more easily and it will help you evaluate its balance. It's a bit like the tip I gave in the last video for shots turning too dark, watching them in super small uh, size is really helpful. Well, this trick works exactly the same. Okay, so for me, black and white should aim at putting upfront composition. I'm sure other photographers will use it more for portraits and emotional shots, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's exactly the same. Another of my teaching in drawing class was that doing a face or a mountain used the exact same technique. I was literally trained at drawing balls of paper with the idea that I'd use the same pencil, movement, technique to draw a rocky landscape. It's exactly the same for us here. If you start thinking about choosing black and white because you want to showcase dynamic, a shape, a light, blah blah blah, then it won't matter if it's on a face or on a forest. What matters is how you arrange the tones. Okay, so how? Now this is the real tricky part. To make the best black and white shots you can in traditional photography, it's generally advised to shoot in color. You see, Shooting in RAW allows you to have the best control possible over your picture in editing. This is very important in traditional photography, but shooting in RAW won't erase the color information. So that means that you cannot shoot in black and white straight away. Well, I would absolutely advise you to do the same in virtual photography, and I'm gonna explain why. In photo modes, we are used to have this noir or desaturated or something like that filter, whatever they name it. In some games, you actually have a couple of different ones, which is cool, but still not enough for me. In post-editing, you don't apply just one type of black and white. You actually have a lot of different filters if you will, that will bring totally different energy and rendering to your shot. You can even use and combine different ones for bringing up such or such detail, playing with dark or bright mood. So if you shoot in black and white in-game, you won't be able to choose any other type of black and white. It will be done. And now you start to see how black and white turns out to be much harder than we think. If you're gonna do this, Use black and white to enhance composition, give a light all its importance, building leading lines. In short, work your black and white consciously. You'll still need to do this in color. To be able to foresee what you will do in the final editing, this is a real training. But if you're really gonna try to improve your black and white skills, I'd absolutely recommend to go through it. And virtual photography can absolutely help you with that. I said the black and white filters uh, of photo mode aren't enough, but I didn't say they are useless. At least you can use them to preview roughly what a black and white version of the shot would be. 
but I'd still encourage you to shoot it in color like you would do in traditional photography and turn it black and white in post with a lot more options at your disposal even with the more simple editing app. Actually, a great game to train your eyes would be Ghost of Tsushima, for instance. It has this Kurosawa mode that turns the whole game in black and white, so roaming around and getting used to spot compositions directly in black and white could be helpful training. And then once you start to find your wind, you'll be more and more at ease to do it naturally in colorful environments too. Also, a great favor you can do to yourself is to find amazing VPRs doing a lot of black and white and immerse yourself into their work to understand it a bit more and then find your own taste and ways to do it. I would definitely recommend you to follow Shiva on X for a start because they are doing an amazing work almost only in black and white. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it to this point. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel if you want to support me and give a chance to my videos to get more opportunities to be found on YouTube. Drop a like and a comment. And don't forget to tell me your tips and views on black and white photography. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep snapping.